welcome to this video in this particular lesson i will tell you how to prepare a lesson plan now i understand that many of you may be unfamiliar with medical education technology and therefore i will just stick to the basics when you approach a question where you are supposed to prepare a lesson plan usually as part of your university practical examination there are a few preliminary things that you should already be aware of one of those is bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy was proposed by benjamin bloom and he has described three domains of learning first the cognitive domain which deals with knowledge or thinking the psychomotor domain which deals with skills or doing and the affective domain which deals with emotions feelings and attitudes now each of these domains is further divided into levels and levels are arranged in order so you have lower order and moving on to higher order now when you get a prompt for a class as part of your practical exam you must first read the prompt and identify the main learning domain now all three domains will be involved to varying degrees however there will be a dominant domain which you must identify first now generally if you are given a theory topic you are dealing with the cognitive domain and if it is some task where learners must physically do something it generally comes under the psychomotor domain any session where counseling communication etc are involved are predominantly under the affective domain now obviously other domains also need to be invoked in order to teach some skill you obviously need to link it with the theory and so on now the next step is identifying the audience now usually this is given in the prompt itself so you will be told to take a session for xyz audience on a particular topic so that's already given now why this is important is because it helps identify the appropriate level within a particular learning domain now what does this mean this basically is referring to the fact that suppose you've been told to take a class for third year mbba students third year mbba students are expected to already be familiar with some content which would have been covered in first and second year therefore you can determine prior knowledge or familiarity with certain preceding topics and so you can increase the level so you can go to a higher order within the particular learning domain so in if you look at the cognitive domain the cognitive domain the lowest uh, order is remembering and the highest is creating so instead of addressing only remembering you could perhaps try to move up to applying and the other advantage with knowing the audience is it helps you determine the audience size so for instance if it's a lecture class which you supposed to take for mbba students then obviously you have some idea about the size of the class the third step is determining the setting now obviously if you are dealing with a lecture then the setting is the lecture theater and sometimes you may be told to plan for a session in say the health center or in a clinic or an anganwadi center etc now this is important because the resources that are available for conducting a session depend on the setting so you may have a large variety of 
audiovisual aids or teaching aids which are available in the lecture theatre. However, these will not be available in say the Anganwadi centre. So knowing the setting is important to narrow down what you can reasonably cover keeping in mind the limitations of the setting. Then you have to determine the duration of the session. Now sometimes this may be mentioned in the prompt itself. For example, you are told to take a 15 minute session for a certain audience or you may be told to take a one hour lecture on a given topic for MBBS students. So, if it is provided in the prompt, it is convenient, but if it is unspecified, then you have to decide what appropriate duration might be. So, a lecture of 45 minutes is reasonable. A health education session, however, for 45 minutes may not be appropriate because people's attention span is short and generally people do not stay around for such a long duration. Unless, of course, you have uh, role plays, dance, music, etc. included in the health education session, people tend to get bored after about 10 or 15 minutes. So, this is the other importance of knowing the duration. Now, with all this information, now you have to develop learning objectives. So, there is a very easy way of developing good learning objectives. It's called the ABCD approach. There are other terms which are used for what is essentially the same strategy for creating a learning objective. So, the ABCD approach essentially is asking you to identify the audience. Who are the learners? The next thing is the behavior. What should they be able to know, do or feel? And the third thing is condition. Under what circumstances or conditions must the behavior be performed? And D is the degree, which is how accurately must the behavior be performed? So what do I mean by this? So you can have an object learning objective formulated using the ABCD approach, which would be something like the objective is at the end of the learning session, third MBBS students should be able to list at least five causes of diarrhea correctly. So, this covers the four things which we have mentioned. So, you've told the audience, the third MBBS students, the behavior is the uh, listing of causes of uh, diarrhea. The condition we have not specified, but you could say write. So this could list could also be an oral thing and the degree is at least five. So we have covered all four elements of this learning objective approach. Now. What you need to do is prepare a list of potential objectives and then eliminate those which are difficult to assess or difficult to achieve within the available time. So you have to keep linking things with what you have already determined previously. So you already know what is the most ideal time frame and based on that you have to then try and fit everything. Now, the actual conduct of the session is step 6 and to do this, you need to answer several questions. For instance, how will you decide on prior knowledge? You need to determine, especially if it is a public session, you need to determine what the public or the audience already knows. Now, if you are dealing with medical students, it is easy for you to say that this particular part of the uh, topic was covered in a preceding lecture. So that is easy. However, in other settings that may not be appropriate. The second thing is how will you introduce the topic in an interesting way? This is also referred to as set induction. So you have to figure out how you can do this. Sometimes it may be where you narrate an incident which is related to the topic. You may also describe a recent news item or you may show a video, or you may share uh, photographs, whatever. So these are ways of generating interest in the session. 
the other thing is which points will you cover like i said you need to consider the current level of the learner and also the level within the main domain that you are planning to target based on that you will have to revise your or narrow down your content so obviously what you cover in first mbbs will not be the same as what you cover in third mbbs you will have more depth the idea here is that you have to include only those bits of information which are relevant to the audience so it should not be inappropriate the next question is how will you deliver the session content now this could be in the form of a handout or you could have a demonstration and so on and then you need to also ask yourself how are you going to link your session with the prior knowledge so the set induction could be one way of doing that and you also need to know what your take home messages are at the end of every learning session the audience should be able to remember 3 to 4 not more than that messages from the session so this is something which an examiner may ask you what are your take home messages so you should have a list already ready and these have to be aligned with your objectives you cannot have take home messages which are in conflict with your objectives or different from your objectives the other question you have to ask is what resources will you need with respect to teaching aids audio visual equipment etc and are these already there so if you need a model is the model available will you have to prepare this considering the shortage of time you have to consider these concerns seriously then you have to answer the question how will you assess learning at the end of your session how exactly are you planning to assess learning there are various ways of doing it one way is you could ask oral questions you could ask them to write answers to short notes uh, uh, short answer questions or you could subject them to some kind of an mcq uh, test or you could conduct an ospi or an oski depending on what the content of your class was and then how are you going to conclude the session are you going to offer a summary are you going to get the audience to uh, come up with a summary are you going to assign them homework uh, are you going to ask them to read something else all of these questions need to be answered and if you have been asked to take a lecture then you have to also consider when you will take attendance because if you were to omit the attendance part from your lesson plan then the examiner will point out that you have not left any time for doing that that is a basic error the next thing is to determine time for each activity now you have by this time already determined what all things need to be done so you got a fixed time frame within which you are going to do n number of activities you have to think of all the activities and assign time for each of them so whether it is asking questions taking attendance summarizing reviewing prior learning every single thing must be accounted for so you need to have a time for each of these things which has been already decided and earmarked this will allow you to stick to your time and not overshoot or complete your session well in advance the next step is preparing the actual lesson plan so by now you have enough information to prepare your lesson plan and here you need to use the appropriate template or format depending upon what is uh, permitted within your university i have offered a simple uh, lesson plan template now here you notice that the first thing is the name of the instructor so you need to substitute with your name put the date your audience the number of learners the subject and the topic the time now the time i have mentioned duration in bracket uh, that is not supposed to be there you just have to read time but you have to mention the duration there i mention it in parenthesis it is not intended to be retained in the actual lesson plan so you should be having a item saying time and then you should mention the duration in minutes as the case may be then you have to give the general objective which is basically 
the one overall objective of the session this is a nutshell of what you plan to do and then you have the specific learning objectives so the learning objectives that we previously identified need to be spelled out here and this must be in chronological order so at the end of the session the learner should be able to one xyz two whatever and then you come to the point where set induction comes in so set induction you have to describe how exactly you're going to generate interest in the topic and introduce the topic then you have a table where you describe the slo now here you don't have to repeat the slo the number alone is enough and then you mention the content for example definition health is the state of whatever and then the method how exactly will the content be delivered so it could be narration it could be display it could be demonstration anything and then the media corresponding to the method that you have described so for instance you may be narrating but you will also be using an overhead projector or you may use a whiteboard and the duration for this particular slo now if your slo has two elements then you need to spell out the duration for each of those elements so five minutes for the first one two minutes for the next one and so on and then you have at the end of this evaluation now if you have a single way of evaluating learning then you may just put a single statement saying the slos will be assessed using short answer questions that is uniform for all the slos but if you have different ways of assessing different slos then it might be prudent for you to mention them separately one way of dealing with this is add another column to this table and uh, mention the evaluation there so against each slo you will have the evaluation also side by side and then of course you have the follow up assignment which you need to mention in terms of what you would like to do for consolidating learning and that is an optional thing however it is desirable to mention it in your lesson plan now there are several things which might go wrong and a few things might get missed so this is just a recap of the important things that you need to pay attention to when you're preparing your lesson plan and eventually when you conduct your session so the first thing is that you should try and limit your lesson plan to a single sheet of paper and uh, don't forget to print copies of the lesson plan to distribute among the examiners you must have memorized your lesson plan and also keep a copy for yourself and one important thing is to have a print of all your content with you as a uh, handout so if you have power failure you will not then be stuck and you can use that and continue with the session uh, without much difficulty so this is what i have mentioned here is the last step saying have a plan b to deal with various problems so you can have mechanical problems suppose you're trying to use a device and it uh, malfunctions or is a technical problem where your laptop or some equipment is uh, some software issue is there or you may have power failure also and sometimes the examiners will deliberately try to put you in a spot by saying that there is power failure now you continue show us how you will continue so you need to have a plan in advance you should have some strategy to deal with these unexpected events and one other important thing is that you would have mentioned various media or teaching aids in your lesson plan you need to ensure that each of these things is actually available and in working condition before you commence your Uh, instructional session and it is always good to incorporate some humor and you must also remember that sometimes an examiner may try to see how well prepared you are by trying to throw you off balance they may stop you midway and ask you to go to a specific time point in your lesson plan so they may say go to minute 30 so you should have a rough idea about what you are supposed to be covering at minute 30 and if you have done all of these things you should not find it very difficult to create your lesson plan as well as conduct your session so thank you for your patience and i'll see you in another video